One thing is for sure, that once NGN is fully realized, then different services are provided on, on the same, on, on different networks, and the same network provides different kinds of services. Now this multi, or this many-to-many -many scenario, requires that each service or each application is provisioned in the best possible manner. For that, the network must be controlled to configure and tailor these services and applications for different service users. In this module, we should look at the network control architectures and protocol. In NGN, once all services are provided using the same infrastructure, including the access side, the core, and the transit network, there is a requirement of service provisioning which is more individual in nature because the end user must be kept aloof or should be unaware of the complexity and the difficulty which is realized in providing such service. So the network control must be activated to provide tailor-made or custom services to the users over the same network. For that, the network control architecture and protocols is, a, is an important recommendation by the NGN. Now, this network control architecture, which acts like an overlay network over existing physical network, is going to help realize this vision. Since there are different functions which must be provided to ensure smooth and transparent delivery of services and applications from the end user's point of view, these functions are provided by some very important network elements. These network elements are deployed across the NGN at various locations. We call them the different functional nodes. These functional nodes each are required to perform their respective uh, functionality. For instance, resource allocation. Uh, this resource allocation is of significant significance once real-time services are being used and the users are requiring a certain level of quality of service. Then quality of service must be ensured that it is provided and some kind of measurement mechanism should also be in place. Since different Networks are all integrated into a unified IP NGN. So different media are being used. So media translation is an important consideration. So whatever media is being used, I'm talking about the soft media or the data, the data formats, which are used by different services, would be now relayed across different networks. Since the end user and this service provider, let's say in a client-server architecture, are now configured on two different encoding standards. So some kind of cross-coding or transcoding would be required. This also is an important functionality of the network control architecture. Then the call and session control, which is an important requirement because like um, in SS7, the call is established and the call is terminated. In, in, in IP networks, it is some kind of session initiation protocol, the SIP kind of functionality, which is required. Uh, so network control architecture and protocols are all addressing those issues. Then the service control, for instance, what level of service a certain user is authorized for and how this user is provided that kind of service by activating the network elements accordingly. Now this NGN standard document promotes or recommends the usage of the, we call it cots, the components of the shelf. The components of the shelf could come from any other standardization body because it is ready to be utilized. For instance, H.248 is basically a signaling mechanism for, the, um, for, for media gateway control when different kinds of media uh, are translated from one kind of network to another. For instance, if a voice call is initiated uh, from IP network and it terminates on, in, on a PSTN, then H.248 activates the right kind of media uh, gateway control, which you, in, in, in turn uh, manages a certain media gateway. Then SIP is another kind of um, ready off the shelf uh, protocol that is uh, pushed and uh, perpetrated by 
the ITF. So it can be used for call establishment, call management, call control, the CDRs, and all that. Then there's another requirement of defining the user to network and the network to network interfaces. It is important because some kind of clarity should be given in NGN to users that when exactly is their call entering into the network from the customer premises to the network premises. And then some kind of border or some kind of uh, understanding should also exist between who is providing the service and who is providing the underlying infrastructure. We call them the network pro provider, the, the network operator, and the service provider. 